Tesla has released a video of its semi when it's charging at 1,200 kilowatt, which is 1.2 megawatt. Now, it sounds amazing, but actually, Zika's 001 can charge at the same speeds, and that's just a standard electric car in China. But when it comes to the US car market, things aren't quite as accelerated as China. So 1.2 megawatt is actually incredibly impressive. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. Tesla has released a video showing a Tesla Semi charging at 1.2 megawatts. So we know what the speeds are now for the Semi. And this means as long as there's enough of these charges around, the Semi will be able to charge really quickly and it won't really matter that it has such an enormous battery. There's been a few orders apparently within the last month for the Tesla Semi as different manufacturers, including PepsiCo and others, have actually been able to test semis and see that they have real world range of up to 500 miles, which is massive. Tesla claimed the Semi would be able to charge 70% of its range in 30 minutes. So for a truck with a 500 mile range and a battery pack size of 800 to 900 kilowatt hours, that requires, yeah, a lot of power. Obviously a lot more than the 350 kilowatt Tesla charging stations, which are quite common in the United States. More common than that though are the 250 kilowatt chargers. Tesla, um, they actually posted a video showing the semi charging at 1,206 kilowatt to be exact. Now Tesla actually have also a new V4 supercharger uh, or cabinet architecture. And this is sort of, it's not really the same story, but these V4 cabinets, these new V4 superchargers, they're able to get around some of the problems that the existing V3, V2 chargers have. So V2 and V3 chargers, if you hook up an 800 volt car to them, they'll charge quite slowly because those superchargers are not really capable of charging at massive speeds. Essentially, they're really built for 400 volt architecture. But the new V4 chargers, they can charge uh, EVs from 400 volt up to 1000 volt vehicle architectures and deliver 500 kilowatt charging speeds. But those V4 cabinets apparently can actually deliver, if the power is there at that location, up to 1.2 megawatts for the Tesla Semi. So I don't know the state of charge. I don't know exactly how long it took to charge the Semi, uh, but I would assume at 1.2 megawatt, uh, you're adding approximately 20 kilowatt hours of energy every single minute. So if a regular car could charge this fast and maintain that charging speed, and let's say it had an 80 kilowatt hour battery, it could charge in three minutes. In fact, less than that, because I'm assuming you wouldn't come in with 0% charge. If you came in with 0% charge, it would charge quite slowly for the first probably 30 seconds. But anyway, three minutes, that's the future. It will happen. It will eventually happen to the point where we have EVs that are commonplace. They already exist in China, but they'll become commonplace where they can charge at 1.2 megawatt. And... Yeah, it's true that the energy uh, architecture is not really there yet for 1.2 megawatts, but it will be eventually. So if this Tesla Semi has an 850 kilowatt hour pack, uh, which is based on the 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile efficiency rating Tesla has mentioned, that means that charging speed of 1.2 megawatts could charge the Semi in 45 minutes from 10 to 80 percent. So as long as it can, you know, not necessarily hold that charging speed, but not taper, not taper off too much, it could charge in 45 minutes, 10 to 80 percent. And that's about the amount of time that a truck driver would probably stop and have a meal, uh, go to the bathroom, and then get back into their vehicle. So this makes a lot of sense, and it's coming right at the point when uh, we know that Tesla is beginning mass production of the Semi at their Gigafactory in Nevada. And apparently that's gonna happen the first half of 2026. Volume production will happen in the second half. And this is gonna be a big deal. Now guys, diesel trucks, they take a while to refill as well. They take 15 minutes. So if an electric truck takes two hours because it has slow charging, it's not gonna work for the long haul. Now remember, most hauls in the United States and Australia and the Europe, most of them are short haul. In fact, I believe more than 80%. But if you want a truck for the longer haul, you need this kind of charging speed. You need really, really fast charging speed. Otherwise, you'd have to wait too long because, you know, with regular charging speed, it'll take you around two hours to charge from 10 to 80%. So if you can hit 1.2 megawatts and get 400 miles of range back um, in a driver break, which is what, 30 to 40 minutes, then it makes long haul electric trucks actually viable. So the Tesla Semi is suitable, clearly, for long haul and short haul deliveries. And that means that I think within a few years time, we're gonna see the trucking industry 
be massively disrupted in many countries around the world, which is great because this does is a source of massive emissions. But more than that, I think they're really unsafe, diesel trucks. I've seen so many occasions where people come around a corner on a freeway or a highway and there'll be a truck, a diesel powered truck, like going up a hill doing 20 to 30 kilometers an hour. I mean, you know, 15 to 20 miles an hour on a freeway. Everyone's traveling at 110 to 120 kilometers an hour. I reckon, I don't know why people don't mention this, but it's it's really, really unsafe that that happens. And electric trucks uh, have the power and torque to be able to get up hills and not cause these situations. Plus, they'll last a lot longer. Plus, they're much more efficient. There's massive benefits to them. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.